Hi, everyone. Hi. It's Cheryl and Vincenzo. Hi. <laughs> we're here at a, in our kitchen in Minnesota, and um, we're excited to just share a virtual um, presentation with you. We know we can't be with you in person right now. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to be, but um, we thought we would record a little greeting and a reading from the book so you had a chance to meet us even though we can't see you in person. Hopefully later we can do that. <laughs> So, my name's Cheryl. I am the author of the book, and I'm a Minnesota native, and this is my husband, Vincenzo. <laughs> I always say he's my Italian souvenir. <laughs> I went to Italy in 2006 with a girlfriend, and I hiked through Italy, and I just I kind of fell in love with it, fell in love with the land, the people, and I thought, I need to go back. So I did. <laughs> I went back. And that's when I traveled um, with my friends Pam and Sam through Tuscany Tours. And um, I actually ate at Vincenzo's restaurant. We didn't know each other then, but I remember eating at your restaurant and how special it yes. was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So a year passed. I went back to Italy again to see now my friend Pam, who I had gotten to know. And she invited me to come and stay with them for a while, and I couldn't resist. So I was able to spend six months in this little village in Chianti called San Guzme. Definitely look it up on, on the map. It's in the middle of, of Chianti, right in wine country, and it's beautiful. Um, and this is where Vincenzo had his restaurant. Yeah, very little town, 200 people. 250 <laughs> people, and it was walled. So really, you know, medieval experience. Um, and my experience living there was really life-changing. I mean, I looked at how I was living and um, I learned a new language. I met these incredible people in the village and at the very end of my experience, I met Vincenzo. <laughs> I'd eaten at his, at his restaurant quite a bit, but I hadn't met him until two weeks before I was supposed to come home, which was kind of tragic. But it all worked out. You see, we're here together now for 10 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we eventually um, connected, fell in love, got married, and now we're here back in Minnesota. But we did live for six years together in this little village. Um, and it was sort of that life-changing kind of experience of a lifetime for me that I felt like I needed to share with other people. And that's why I wrote the book. So the book is called Love in a Tuscan Kitchen, Savoring Life Through the Romance, Recipes, and Traditions of Italy. And so it's our story. It's about meeting. It's about how we fell in love, how I fit in in this little village, and how I was finally accepted by the village as the chef's wife, which is what they called me towards the end of my experience. And eventually they started calling me Cheryl. <laughs> but that was kind of a tough name for them. So <laughs> um, that's what the book about. And it has recipes sprinkled in it. There are 38 recipes. And I would have to say these are our favorite recipes. Some are mine. Some are Vincenzo's from his restaurant. Some are his mom's. Your mom. And some are my mom's. <laughs> uh, and so it's a, a really kind of a touching love story. I can't believe it's mine sometimes. Um, but it's our love story, and it has recipes sprinkled into it. So we hope you love it. But I thought what I'd do today is just read from the chapter from when we first met and when I asked Vincenzo for the recipe for his hot chocolate cake. So this is from chapter 8, and it's on page 83. In late October, we were celebrating a birthday for Pam's husband, Sam which was hosted at a local restaurant situated in the heart of the village. This was Vincenzo's restaurant. I'd eaten there many times during the weeks and months I was in the village, so I knew it, it was very familiar to me. I was feeling so sad about the fact that I had to leave Italy to return to Minnesota. In a few weeks, and I had grown to love the village, the land, and the people of this place. As I was enjoying my meal that day, I remember wandering about the person the chef who had created such an incredible food. The love and care he had taken in preparing the food was obvious from the artistic way it was presented and the looks of satisfaction that, and pure happiness as everyone was enjoying the dishes. That day, we had a hot chocolate cake for dessert. Over the months and weeks I had lived in the village, I'd eaten the cake many times. 
As I was taking my last bite, I said under my breath, I could eat this every day. <laughs> I didn't think anyone had heard me, but Marco, the maitre d' and one of the partners in the restaurant, heard me, and he replied softly in my ear, we are here every day, he said. He knew I loved the cake, and it's, he seemed to be tempting me. Um, that's when I looked at him, and I said, well, I'm leaving in a few weeks. Could I at least have the recipes? Marco said, sure, let's go talk to the chef, Vincenzo. Thank you, Marco. <laughs> yeah, yes, thank you. I responded in disbelief. I can go and meet the chef? We could never do that back home. <laughs> So that very afternoon, I followed Marco back to the kitchen and I met Vincenzo for the first time. He looked up as he was stirring a big pot of soup and greeted me without saying a word. He had these giant oval eyes and a wide smile that took up most of his face, just like now, <laughs> always smiling. He wore glasses and had on his traditional white coat and checkered chef pants. He was not too tall and not too short, about five foot seven, and I instantly felt like he was welcoming me into his kitchen. I could smell the traces of the meal we had just enjoyed and I was curious about what he was making. I asked him, what are you making? In my broken Italian. Mm -hmm. And he said, ribolita, for tomorrow. Next, in English, I said, I love your hot chocolate cake recipe. I, may I have it if possible? Both Marco and Aldo, the sommelier of the restaurant, spoke English quite well, so I naturally thought in that Vincenzo could too. He smiled and said, no, no speak, speak English. English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mar <laughs> and Marco just smiled at me and said, well, you'll figure it out, <laughs> and left us together in the kitchen to finish his work. My Italian was not the best, even after six months, so I wondered how I would really communicate with him to get a complicated recipe. Emma. I love you, Emma. Emma. <laughs> so she, Emma is our friend's little girl, and she was about seven at the time. Mm -hmm. She had followed me into the kitchen and instantly ran up and gave Vincenzo a big hug and a smile. As he reached down to pu pull her into his arms, she whispered in his ear in Italian, I can help you with the recipe. Emma knew Vincenzo well, as she frequently would watch him cooking in the kitchen from the main square of the village. She, too, loved his chocolate cake. It was the perfect idea. Emma would help me get the recipe. And this is where the story of our life together, Vincenzo's and mine, began. All because I asked for a recipe for the chocolate cake. So later that week, I went back to the restaurant with Emma, who is now seven, and she translated the recipe for the chocolate cake that we now call the hot chocolate love cake, as told by Vincenzo to me. I still have the little piece of paper where I recorded the recipe. It's written on a pad of sunpl sunflower paper from a notebook that I used to keep all of my favorite memories written down during my time. So that is how our story started, and that's part of the book. Um, and we hope that, you know, even though we can't be with you in person, that you will enjoy our story. It's a beautiful journey, um, and that you'll enjoy the recipes. And, you know, we are here right in Minnesota, right in Rochester, so... Feel free to reach out if you have questions about the recipes or if you want us to come and cook with you when things are a bit, kind of back to normal. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we're able to come and cook. We do private cooking classes. We do private dinner parties. Um, and you can reach out to us through our Facebook page. It's um, for Vincenzo. It's called Vin Chef Cooking. And for me, it's Love in a Tuscan Kitchen. And so, um, thank you for inviting us to do this thank short you. presentation. Um, we wish we could be there in person. But until then, we're sending you our greetings from our kitchen here in Minnesota mm -hmm. and hope that you're well and that we get to meet you in person someday soon. Grab your Italian cocktail. Chin chin. Chin chin. Stay hope safe. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Ciao. Ciao.